at home. Today we're speaking to a very special guest, world-renowned scientist and rheumatologist, Dr. John Estab. After 21 years as Arthritis Research Canada's scientific director, Dr. Estale is handing the leadership reins over to Dr. Diane Lakai, a longtime senior scientist who's been with ARC since its founding in 1999, and most recently held the position of associate scientific director. Dr. Estale, thanks for joining us. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me, Kelly. Always a pleasure to chat. Of course. Now, the ARC announcement was made on July 1st. And the first thing I think our viewers would like to know is, um, how did you know it was time for a transition? Well, actually, I told the board two years ago, June uh, 2018, that uh, two years later, I wanted to uh, step down as scientific director. And we started a search committee. And in November of 2018, we appointed, after a major search, uh, Diane Lakai as the associate uh, scientific director with the view that she would indeed uh, on July the 1st, 2020 take over, which she did, which is great. Well, the, the accolades are coming in and you um, justifiably are being praised for your leadership in establishing ARC. And it's really an incredible success story for our audience who aren't aware it's grown from one scientist and one student trainee, I'm sure you remember those days in 2000, to being the globally recognized and the largest clinical arthritis research institution in North America it is today. Really, really incredible uh, success story. And it's now affiliated, I think it's with five Canadian universities. And you now have more than 100 scientists and staff working at ARC. What, uh, as the founder, as the visionary, as the, as the leader, what has that experience been like? What's the experience been like? Well, it's been um, a fantastic ride for me. Uh, it's been the, that first student you mentioned uh, back in 1999 uh, was in fact Ian Lakai, who's now the scientific director. So the wheel, the wheel has gone full circle. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's been a, a fabulous time for me because it's a, what we've done is, in addition to really going out and seeking the best arthritis uh, clinical scientists in the country, uh, for me, I've been able to work with them. And there's nothing quite like having a whole pile of younger, smarter people to work with who. Uh, just make every day exciting. Uh, I've always said that the uh, if it's not fun, don't do it. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've had a I've had the great good fortune to work with all these fabulous uh, scientists. Arc has been known um, as this incredible culture for research innovation. Um, you've already talked a little bit about um, mentoring and how it's known for that environment for graduates, students, new scientists. But at the same time, under your leadership, ARC has also become known as an organization that has ensured the patient voice is represented in all facets of its operation. Can you describe to our audience a little bit about this commitment to patients? Uh, we started with day one. Uh, we created the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board. And this has been an opportunity uh, uh, to, for people with arthritis to volunteer and play a major role in, in helping us develop and translate arthritis research. So they've been there very often at the first meeting where we're saying, well, there's a grant out there, there's a little bit of money on the table. How could we apply for it? How could we come up with a really, really great question that might win that money? And there's a patient there. Um, and they've had a huge impact. Uh, there were grants that have been approved where the panel has said, we really, really like this idea because of that aspect that they're going to do. And that was, the, that was the aspect that the patient had suggested. Um, so absolutely, uh, 
the other thing the patients have done and uh, perhaps was the very first thing they did was to say, we've got to get the results out there. We don't have any easy way to access results. Um, and, and they really have spearheaded that. It was the beginning of our attempts at knowledge translation. It's continued. Uh, it's expanded under the leadership of one scientist who's really the arthritis knowledge translation expert for the country, Minda Lee. And I think it's, it's a space we have even further to get better at. Uh, people like your group, arthritis consumer experts, are, are superb at it. And uh, I think uh, we can learn from you. We have learned from you along the way, too. Well, it's, it's very generous. Um, I think one thing that um, many people in the community know is that there has been that very strong collaborative par partnership between ACE and ARC. Um, you have been our scientific advisor over our 20 years of operation, which is almost parallel to ARC's uh, timeline as well. And um, I think it's been very rewarding for us and um, hopefully for, for ARC researchers as well. We're, um, we're down this road now in terms of like ARC's history, in terms of your career, we're still searching for a cure to arthritis. But at the same time, there have been many notable research milestones, research achievements, not just by scientists in Canada and the US, but around the world. Um, it really, in, in the areas of treatment and therapy, uh, it's really been almost a revolutionary change thanks to research. I wonder if you could share with our viewers today what you view as maybe some of the most significant ones, um, particularly as it relates to um, the lives of patients and living their lives and trying to manage their lives with the disease. Um, well, yes, if one could go on for some time on this, but uh, some uh, the highlights really, it really relates to inflammatory types of arthritis where the monstrous adva advance has occurred. So rheumatoid arthritis, uh, psoriatic arthritis, spondylitis, lupus, diseases like that have uh, certainly done better. Uh, when I started in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, was something that people felt was almost untreatable. And I was asked uh, going into training why I would bother to go into an area where nothing could be done. And I really felt, well, maybe we can do things. Uh, it, there's been, a, as you described, a revolution. So that where the um, 20 years after uh, the onset of rheumatoid arthritis, a quarter of people were dead, a quarter of people were bedridden, a quarter of people were moderately disabled, and a quarter of people were doing pretty well. Um, now, I think uh, I can tell a new patient with rheumatoid arthritis, someone who's just walked into the office, that they have to give me a year. And before the year is up, I should be able to have them back to 95% of normal. Now, that's really dramatic. And uh, it's been uh, based on Three, three three big things. Uh, one, uh, diagnose early. Two, treat aggressively. And three, treat to a target like being 100% better. Uh, and medications have come along. It started with methotrexate in the late 80s and 90s, so-called triple therapy for rheumatoid arthritis in the 90s, and then the biologics, uh, which are these large protein molecules that are injected or infused through a vein and have really interfered with the inflammation that is the driver of the disease. So yes, things are a great deal better for people with say rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, but that's only about, um, that may affect one and a half percent of the population, but uh, a much larger percent has arthritis. And the largest segment is, of course, osteoarthritis, where we have to date been less successful, but I do believe that is going to be 
the next big event uh, will be osteoarthritis. That's interesting because I did want to ask you about you know the next decade now as we enter um, uh, 2020 and going into this next decade, um, where you see research going, and certainly um, the work that is being done right now, the foundational work being done right now in osteoarthritis, that's something I think for a lot of our patients, and as you said, probably four out of five of the six million Canadians living with arthritis have osteoarthritis. This is something that is a huge, huge level of importance, but not just for those patients, but um, as a leading cause of disability, um, arthritis has a tremendous economic burden, and a lot of that is due to osteoarthritis. I don't know if you want to elaborate on any um, sort of specific areas with OA, but also I'm wondering, are there any other um, areas of study right now that we're going to hear more about over the next few years? Well, let's just touch on osteoarthritis because I think it's interesting. You know, the, the big advance really occurred in the 60s when uh, Charnley in England put in an artificial hip. And there's no doubt artificial hips and artificial knees uh, have been great, but they are one focused on those joints uh, and uh, they are dealing with the latest stage of the disease. Uh, Jacek Kopech, who's an arthritis research Canada scientist, uh, showed a long time ago that one quarter of all knee osteoarthritis is from obesity, from being just over, excessively overweight, not a little overweight, excessively overweight. And we have a young scientist, Jackie Whitaker, working now, who is, believes, and I think she's totally correct, that one quarter of knee osteoarthritis is due to adolescent sports injuries, and that this could be prevented. Um, and finally, a big team uh, led by uh, Yolanda Siber and all sorts of other people on it um, ha have shown that an anatomic abnormality in the hip called femoral acetabular impingement, this bump, uh, really doesn't matter, but there's a bump on the hip that actually is leading to hip osteoarthritis. We've never really had a good handle on hip. We know about uh, overweight, injury, and this sort of thing for me, but the hip has been an enigma. And uh, the team is showing that we don't know how much, but a significant portion of hip osteoarthritis may be something that down the road we can prevent. Uh, so rather than having to replace the hip, we're gonna prevent it. So that's the exciting things. And then as you alluded to, there's a tremendous interest by the pharmaceutical interest and uh, industry and, and um, basic science labs. So people who do uh, work on animals and cells and this sort of thing, which we don't do, uh, to find a new target, rather like was found for rheumatoid arthritis, that can alter, uh, alter osteoarthritis progression. And I think that will happen. Uh, I really do. I, I don't know when, but I think, I think they are getting very close to hitting the ball out of the park. Just staying on this theme of the future, um, we'd like to now sort of direct it over to you, Dr. Estelle, and um, what, what is in your future? Um, obviously, um, all of us in the community are looking forward to your continued leadership. Um, what, um, what is uh, in your future as it relates to either research or even in your, uh, in your clinical uh, practice? I'm going to continue to see patients one day a week. I've been doing it for decades and I'm not going to say how many, and I really enjoy that. Uh, so that is going to continue. Um, and uh, I'm going to continue dropping into uh, Arthritis Research Canada in, uh, in Richmond. And I really hope that I will be able to help, uh, say, students, uh, um, maybe young faculty uh, with just some mentoring and how the game is played and how to win at the game, that sort of thing. Um, that, that's always been fun. Uh, I probably spent more time 
doing higher level admin and fundraising and things, but I'd like to get back to, uh, to doing more of the mentoring uh, from a research perspective. So that's, in the, that's all in the card. Um, what else? I, I just played my first five holes of golf ever. And uh, <laughs> I think it was five. Fortunately, it got very dark and one couldn't continue. <laughs> so you, uh, you saved that, did you? Um, well, congratulations on that new endeavor. Um, certainly, I, I, um, I can only imagine what the, the level of excitement will be in that ARC office when they do hear that Dr. Estale is dropping by today. Um, and uh, certainly what I want to do right now, um, not just on behalf of, of ACE, but in terms of all of our members across the country, is to congratulate you again on this milestone. Um, we know there are more to come. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing about it and hopefully maybe even being part of it. Thanks, Dr. Estelle. Thank you very much, Kelly. And uh, you and arthritis consumer experts keep up the great work too. Um, and I guess the only I can say on a personal level, uh, having played some tennis and golf as a summer sport, I thought you were a lot smarter to take up golf, but uh, good luck with that. <laughs> and that, uh, that wraps up. Uh, our discussion today with Dr. Estale. And we wanna thank you uh, for being part of it. And please join us again for another episode of Arthritis at Home.